Hello, this is Reza Red from Redacad. In this video, I'm going to talk about how the composite model with analysis services connection or with Power BI dataset connection works, or in other name, uh, direct query to Power BI dataset connection. Uh, how does it work? How we can use it? Let's see how it is. Before you start learning about how this works, I strongly recommend you to check the link down in the description below, which uh, is related to my blog post about this topic. And in that you'll find a link to the video and also, also uh, the blog post about why this feature is an important feature, the ability to have uh, multiple connection to Power BI datasets, creating a composite model or direct query to Power BI dataset or Azure Analysis Services, why this is important, uh, and then you can learn about how this is possible. So um, let's assume that you already learned about that and you know why it is important. Uh, you want to know how you can use this. Basically, you'll create a Power BI uh, report or dataset with connection to a Power BI dataset. Now there's a limitation here that if your Power BI dataset is already located in my workspace, like for example, some of these, uh, you can see these are uh, located in my workspace. For example, if I go and select something here that is in my workspace, um, this acts like a normal live connection to a Power BI dataset. Uh, something that we already had it for a long time. So here you see that I have a Power BI live connection, uh, live connection to Power BI dataset, which shows me all the tables, their relationships, calculations. I can create also a measure. As you can see in the modeling section, I can basically just create a measure. Um, I cannot bring other data sets. This is because my data set uh, that I'm getting data from it is located in the in my workspace. Uh, and at the time of creating this video, it is limited that if your dataset is in my workspace, you cannot uh, combine it with another dataset. Now, this limitation might be lifted in the future and you might be able to do so. However, I strongly uh, suggest not doing that because imagine there is someone in an organization who created the dataset, then other people go and build datasets on top of the dataset that that person published into my workspace. Uh, so there are other data sets using that as a source. And then that person leave the organization. It's really hard to get hold of that original data set. Uh, so I strongly suggest not to do that. If you have a data set that is going to be sourced for other data sources, uh, other data sets as a source, uh, put it in an organizational workspace. So apart from that limitation, now how this works. So if I have a data set that is not in my workspace, I'm going to create another Power BI file here, again with the connection to a Power BI data set. If my data set this time is located in an organizational workspace, um, I create uh, the connection to a Power BI data set. This time I'm getting it from, from a data set that is located in, uh, in a workspace, organizational workspace. So this similar to the previous one, this creates a live connection to that data set. You can say it is live connection because it is written here that it is live connection and you see the tables, there is no data tab, uh, modeling is limited. However, this time you have the option to get data from other places. And as soon as you start doing that, like for example, if I go ahead and get data from Excel, it comes up with this message saying that um, to make changes in the existing model, we have to change this to direct query connection. So this would create actually a copy of our model, a local copy of our model with a direct co query connection to the actual Power BI dataset. This is one way to change it to this type of model. Another way is to use this option here. Down at the bottom, you see that make changes to this model. So I can actually go and click on this and change it from being live connection to be uh, to be a direct query connection using this add a local model. When I do that, this will change to be a direct query connection. So you'll see that down below here, it tells me that it is a direct query connection. 
Uh, if I hover on my tables, I see that information here tells me that it is direct query, but it is to analysis services because Power BI dataset is analysis services dataset, and this is the information about that, right? Now, if I go ahead and bring another data source, I can combine these. I can even combine this, uh, I combine this with another Power BI dataset. So this is one Power BI dataset. This coloring in the new uh, model layout is really helpful. I can bring another Power BI dataset. Uh, and let's say I just select another movies. Now, don't worry much about this modeling. This doesn't really follow the modeling principles. Uh, best if I have one to one relationship is to uh, combine the two into one. But let's not worry about those at the moment. This is not a modeling example. This is more about how this feature works. So this is uh, the red one that you see in this view is coming from another data set. So I have tables coming from one data set on this side, tables coming from another data set on this side. This coloring is quite helpful. And if I hover on these, I'll see that where they are coming from. I can bring as many as data sets I want. I can even bring part of data as an Excel file, which I already have an Excel file, which I'm going to use it here. Um, so this is one of the benefits of having a, having a Power BI data set uh, as a direct query connection because then I can combine it with other data sets. So here you can see that I have like three types of data sources. This one is imported from an Excel file. Those two are from their Power BI data sets. I can create connection between these. That is not normally a problem. It might take a little bit of time to create the connection though, because part of data is from the source. So it depends, uh, is coming from a uh, data set in, uh, over the internet. So it might be a little bit slow considering that. Uh, but as you see, there is no problem in creating relationships and everything would work fine. Now you see most of these relationships are one to one, both directional. That is because the model is designed this way. Otherwise it is, fine to create any types of relationships here. So it works perfectly fine just like that. Now I can go and build also visualizations from these different, uh, from these different uh, things into my report. Like for example, I can build a visualization from the sales report like lifetime grass showing that in a card visual. This is from sales and sales com is coming from the data set here. I can get something from this box office mojo. I'll just bring uh, everything uh, from any of these a visualization that we can then track how they are working. Like for example, from this one, I'll bring just count of movies or from another one, which is let's say box office mojo, the other one. I'll bring worldwide sales as a card visual. So, uh, and, and I can have three of them in one visual as well. I just bring them separately so that you can see that these are all fine anyway. So what are the benefits here? Benefits is that I can combine data sets together. Another benefit is that, well, I can go and do any modeling things I want, such as creating column tables, not just measures. Uh, I can do all of those calculations. Um, so that is about using or creating this type of connection. What about publishing it? Well, I can publish this simply in anywhere I want. I can change the name of this composite model two. I would call it. Uh, I can publish it in a workspace um, that uh, some other accounts have access to it. For now, I'm just publishing it to this workspace. Now, publishing itself isn't a problem. It's just simple to publish it. However, seeing that report published is a little bit different from normal report, which is uh, the part I'm going to explain a little bit. So this is the report now published. If I go and open that report, you see that the part that is coming from the Excel file is just there. Those two that are coming from the other Power BI data sets, I'm getting an error for that. And at the top, it says that there is no gateway access. Um, in fact, you don't really need gateway for these. You need gateway for that. But this setup needs to be done. So what I'm going to do is to go to the 
related content. I see the data set, then I go to the setting of that data set. In the gateway section, I'll make sure that uh, I have the gateway selected correctly. You need gateway only for the on-premises data source for something that you import. In this case, it was my Excel file. For the other two, I don't really select add to gateway. So just for the on-premises um, imported one. After applying this, there's one more step to do, and that is the data source credential. For the two Power BI datasets, I need to enter credential, and for that I choose OAuth2, if I haven't done that already. Uh, but I have done that already for some other examples, so I don't really need to log in. So you select that and you sign in. The account used here is the account to create the connection, not the account to access the data. Uh, this is important, and I'll explain about this in another video, which I'll explain how the rollable security works in this type of model. You can also click on show lineage view so that you can see actually how this data set connected to the other data sets. In this case, you see this is coming from one Excel file provided through Gateway and two other data sets called analysis services, but in fact, these are Power BI data sets. Okay, now looking at the report, I'm going to look at the report at the moment, uh, which is this one. So this time you should see that this is loading absolutely fine. So there's no problem with that. So that gateway problem is, so, uh, is solved. Another thing is that, well, last thing, if I want to share this, how this works. If I share this with someone, let's say I share it with my other account, without any special access, just a view only access. And in Power BI, there are different ways to share. Um, now I can come and show you how this works in the other account. So this is the other account, which I'm going to see. Now in this account, when I go to this to refresh it, I see everything. And that is not only because this report is shared with me, but also because this account has built access on these two Power BI datasets. That is important. Uh, just to show you one of these datasets, for example, one of these datasets is in this workspace, these uh, data sources, actually. One of them was this. And in this data source, if I go to manage permission, uh, the other account is already admin account. Or the other workspace that this is coming from is from here. And I have another Power BI dataset. Uh, remember, there was two Power BI datasets there. This Power BI dataset also, I set the access to this user as a build access. If that access wasn't there, then I would have uh, get an error very likely in this situation, which I didn't because this access is already provided. So make sure that the build access is provided. So in, in overall, uh, this, is, uh, this is the way that it, this works. Uh, there are lots of details. There are some limitations uh, in terms of role-level security scenarios uh, is different. I'm going to explain these in the next videos and articles. For now, if you want to learn more, uh, click on the description below. There's a link that have more links to study more. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos of Power BI and AI.